Hi, and welcome, welcome, welcome to each and every one of you here at Paint and Sip this afternoon. We have quite an intimate crowd with us today, which is really, really nice because we can interact as much as we possibly want to with Tuesday Houston today. As you can see, Tuesday Houston is sitting at Stephen's house um, with the paint and sip crew. <laughs> She's got a really awesome mask on. <laughs> I love it. And as I welcome you, um, I am accepting people into the waiting room. Welcome, welcome, welcome. My name is Alex, I am from Call to Care, and I'd like to take a moment just to explain a little bit about what Paint and Sip and what Call to Care is. Um, I'm having to navigate with two screens here, so my, my um, face might move whilst I present this. But just for you that don't know, Paint and Sip is a call to care fundraising initiative where we try and do something quite fun but um, ultimately what you guys are doing is you're not only painting a gorgeous piece today you are also um, contributing to improving lives through education and through collaboration and what that means is call to care hosts several different social outreach initiatives throughout the Cape Town Peninsula, from food security programs, um, implementing vegetable gardens in underserved communities, through to life skills, training, work ready programs, you name it. And we do this through leveraging corporate support, leveraging um, public volunteering, international interns, and naturally, of course, COVID-19 has hit us quite hard, like I think everyone in the whole world, um, but we are slowly bouncing back. We've got so many programs that we are jet starting again. And I actually just wanted to take a little bit of time today just to introduce you to those programs before we get started with our paintings. One of the programs that we do, um, and by the way, uh, before I jump into that, you can follow us on our various different um, platforms at Call to Care. I'm going to share those platforms in the chat room. So if you open up your chat room, you'll see those links there. And we've got quite a variety. So please do share, please subscribe because we can always update you with what we're doing. Um, one of our hero programs and one that's very close to my heart is called the Igadi Project. And that is our food security and education program where we are implementing vegetable gardens in underserved communities and we are also delivering out, um, we are delivering training to those beneficiaries. And we do this in various different ways. Um, sometimes we bring out corporates so that they can have a nice team build out in the gardens. Um, we have eco-learning programs in the gardens, after school programs, really trying to just drive that educational component of the eGuardi project. Um, and naturally, of course, you know, through the COVID crisis, food security was the biggest, biggest um, other pandemics and crises that took place. Um, I'd like to also show you, I'm not going to show you this whole video, but I would like to um, show you what one of our gardens looks like. So this is a garden in Lange currently, and it's absolutely thriving. It looks absolutely gorgeous. Um, we are there twice a week. We have an uh, after uh, eco learning program that we do with the children. And as you can see, I mean, there's a beetroot bed. Um, if we scroll on here, it's just it's just thriving. It's just looking absolutely gorgeous. So ways that you can get involved, other than of course paint and sip, which you are here, and we really really thank you for being here. Ways you, that you can get involved is you can volunteer with us. Um, anyone is welcome. We've got a volunteer calendar on our website. Um, you can introduce um, or you can bring your team out, have a corporate day with us. The children can teach you a lesson, which I think is always quite fun. 
Um, if you would like to, your team can get involved in actually implementing a garden in a beneficiary you need. We have a long database of places that actually need food gardens. And also you can donate monthly. Um, I will once again just put the links of how you can get involved in the chat bar. So please, please do follow our initiatives. Um, find ways to get involved with us. We absolutely are passionate about what we do. Um, and that is all. That's all I wanted to share with you today. I realize it's a bit of a mouthful. But um, without further ado, let's get on to paint. And so first of all, I would like everyone to give themselves a little bit of an awkward round of applause in your living rooms for actually being here, <laughs> for contributing um, to our initiative. We really, really appreciate it. Paint and sip actually is one of the reasons that we are able to do as much as we do. So thank you very much to each and every one of you here. Okay, painting and sipping. It's a very straightforward affair. The more that you sip, the easier it is to paint. <laughs> Hence the name. So I hope you have your wine in hand. <laughs> if you don't drink, um, like myself today, I'm drinking a nice cup of coffee um, just to keep me alert and awake. And you have everything that you need in front of you. It was delivered to your door thanks to the paint and sip team in the background, um, packaging those boxes, delivering them to your door. Uh, and they are so gorgeous. Aren't they just so gorgeous? Um, so we don't have many house rules. Yeah, we would really love it if you just enjoyed it, sat back. Um, we think it's really important that you like set up your environment and so put some music on in the background, have your bottle of wine on hand, ensure that like everything is set up around you. You'll need a glass of water, you'll need a rag um, to dry your paintbrushes with. Just really set up your environment. And ultimately, this is a, this is a time that you are going to take a deep breath, and just relax. It is a Sunday afternoon. We're not thinking about work. We're not thinking about responsibilities and stresses. We are simply just taking some time and focusing on painting and being creative today. How it is going to work here on this online platform is that I am the moderator as such for the session. So if you have any questions, um, you are welcome to put them into the chat bar and I can echo that to Tuesday. Tuesday is going to be painting and she's going to be taking us through the steps, but she won't actually have access to the chat bar. So please do let us know if you have questions and I'll make sure that I echo that to Tuesday. And then after every step, Tuesday will give a period of time where she opens up for questions. And it's at that point where if you switch on your microphones and let us know what your questions are, show us your pieces, we would be able to guide you even further. We've got a few people still coming into the Zoom session. Hello and welcome everybody that's just joined us. It's so nice to see you. Um, so that's pretty much how it works. Um, step by step, and then once Tuesday elicits questions, you're welcome to ask questions. And if you have any questions during the session, please put it into the chat bar and I will make sure that I mention the question to Tuesday. And we will also be asking her questions about who she is and about her art career so that we can find out a little bit more about Tuesday Houston in this session. So if you're curious about anything at all, again, pop that question into the chat bar and I will ensure that Tuesday gets that question. Another thing not to forget is that we have running competitions throughout the entire session. So whilst you are painting and with your friends or there in your space, please do take a selfie, take a photograph with the friends and family, and please put it onto our platforms. The, um, the handle is at paint and sip ZA. I will type that right now into the chat bar. <laughs> there we go. So that's the handle. Please make sure that you share, 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 because there is a draw that takes place and you can actually win yourself either a box that will be delivered to your door or a ticket to the next in-person event. And at the end of this lesson, at the end of this lesson, it's not a lesson, it's a class, what am I saying? At the end of this class, 
Uh, we will also have a, our famous wheel of names. So everyone that's in the session, and there aren't too many of us here, it's a nice intimate group today, um, you have a better chance to win a box or a uh, ticket to the next event. We are going to do the wheel of names at the end of the session, so please do stay tuned for that. Okay, <laughs> that's all the mouthful I have for you today. Thank you so, so much to each and every one of you here. Without further ado, I would like to welcome Tuesday Houston, our absolutely incredible artist. As you can see, she has all of her artwork displayed behind her. She has the most incredible stylized art style, um, actually one of my favorites. So you're really in good hands today and she's gonna take you step by step through the painting. Tuesday, how are you? Thank you so, so much for joining us today. Hi Alex, it's so lovely to be here and see you. By a slider space. <laughs> <laughs> I know. We're in the matrix. It's a little bit weird, isn't it? <laughs> I think now we'd be used to Zoom sessions, but it's still a bit disconcerting. <laughs> I know. I know. I, there is actually a little bit of Zoom fatigue that I think is starting to set in. Um, but, yeah, it's actually so nice that we're still able to do this and something fun like this on Zoom. Um, and we're still able to host these virtual events. So thank you to everyone that is here and that has um, bought a box. That's really awesome. Um, so Tuesday, are we ready? Are we ready? Shall we just talk and go? I've got a box here in front of me, the same as everybody else. I think everyone's um, ahead of me a bit in that they look as if they're unpacked and ready. Um, I suppose that's in case I forget to do what it is I do. Um, just going to get my box unpacked. It's such a lovely little kit. I wouldn't mind if all of my paintings started off like this. <laughs> Be a lot more fun. Now we're going to need a palette to mix our colors on. So you can either use part of the box that's, um, that's there or a paper plate if you have it or a, a leftover thing. What I've started using actually as palettes at home is um, <laughs> the, the sides of plastic milk bottles. I find that this um, works really nicely as a palette and it cleans really easily. For some reason the, the paint doesn't seem to stick to it. So I've been using those but you really can just mix it on on whatever you like. Uh, just not something that's too flimsy because it will disintegrate. Um, I'm actually going to be sensible because this pretty tablecloth, I'm just going to pop the apron underneath, just like that in case it edges. Now, we're going to start off, I usually work from the top down on a, on a painting. Um, and then as it dries, I might go back up to the top again and add things. And I always put in my sky first before drawing in any of the details. I just find it much easier to be able to put in a sky without having to worry about painting around little objects and things. So I'm going to start off with blue and white um, and paint in my sky right the way across um, till about a... a third of the way down the canvas so that's um, and you also want to grade your blue slightly so it'll be darker at the top and it'll be lighter at the horizon um, but please feel free to make it your own sky if you want to add some puffy white clouds go ahead if you want it quite dramatic you know you can do that it, it is your painting you are the master of your painting and it is especially special if they you know, it, it, if it is your own and not a total replica of mine. I always love that in, in some of the live classes we've done. You have some people who do the paintings exactly as mine are done and then other people who have a field day and add all sorts of things. Um, trying to think, you know, we've had an alien spacecraft in the middle of a field before and we've had penguins and we've had all sorts of things. Um, appear in my in my landscapes. Um, so you're going to be mixing blue and white. Um, I generally actually go through quite a, a, a bit of white. Uh, it's a good idea to add your dark color to your light instead of your light to your dark color. Um, it's just 
easier to control it as the color goes. Um, at this point, also, well, I'm only going to be painting on this surface today just because it's it's easier without the, um, the, the way I'm set up. But one decision you need to make, and I'm just going to grab one of the, the older paintings, is if you're going to paint over the edges or not. So, for instance, this one, I actually continued round the sides. So if you're going to be continuing your painting round the sides of the canvas, you actually need to do it from the beginning because you don't want to have to worry about adding those bits later. But if you don't want to paint around the edges, what you can do is when you're finished, just add in, you know, you, you paint over your rough edges to finish it off. Okay. Here we go, getting in the blue, and then as I'm going, kind of mix around and add some extra white as I go. And I'm, I'm going to do a sort of streaky sky, but you can do it that you've got, let me just show you before I streak it, you can actually come in and, and do clouds if you wanted to. Um, just adding white on white while it's still all wet. But I'm going to keep it fairly plain. There we go. Now, while the paint is still wet, you can sort of blend it and play with it. If you get it com at any point, you realize, hang on, it's completely wrong and you're making too much of a mess. There's also the thing, as soon as it's dry, you can paint on another layer and alter it. So, mustn't worry too much about it. There we go. That's the sky. It looks so amazing. I wish I was painting. <laughs> well, are they any... I'm painting today. Oh, I've got you can't see him on camera, but but Steve is here next to me. He's also painting, so so happy, so happy. We have to give progress so reports happy. on on his painting. Yes, definitely, <laughs> please. <laughs> what is so amazing is that I mean the team is just sort of all over. Right? I'm in Belleville. Um, Steve is in Century City. It's actually so amazing that we can all come together and <laughs> um, even, and, you know, enjoy it in the comfort of our own homes. <laughs> that is so cool. I'm going to start sketching in just lightly in pencil. You don't have to do this, but it, it does sort of make it a bit easier if you know exactly where you're going on something that's got fairly precise lines like this. So I'm just going to draw in um, where my my various things are going to be, the, the, the lines of the hills. So I'm going to start by doing a bit of a hill line. <clears throat> and just in that moment of doing that, I've realized I want my sky to come down a bit further down. So I'm going to just paint some extra sky in. This is where I want the lighthouse to be. Now the lighthouse is 
ever so slightly fatter at the bottom than at the top. That's basically so the only thing that I can suggest um, at this stage, Tuesday, is that we can't really see so not the see that. Really, no. Unfortunately, the camera's not picking up that detail. Um, is there any way we can do it? Let me darker, just or? let me just see. What I'll do is I'm going to draw it in, and then I will actually put in. I don't think you're going to see this even close to the camera. What I'll do is I'm giving myself the rough lines, and then I will actually put them in with a, a black paint line, which isn't for you guys to copy, but then at least you can can see. I think would Thanks. probably be. That would be great. Thank you yeah. so much. Oh. We can find a, one of my very fine brushes and do a dark line for you. <clears throat> <laughs> Loving the sky. <laughs> well, Steve's having a lot of fun with this sky. Really I'm trying to decide whether it's a Picasso sky or a Van Gogh sky or a. <laughs> or a Picasso. Little <laughs> pig and. Where's the seven bush? <laughs> So you'd want it more dark on top. You, yeah, so if you, if you look at the sky, down. you can't really see so much on a cloudy day like today, but if you actually look at the sky mm. in the middle of the day, it's usually a lot bluer as you look up and then towards the horizon, it's it's slightly paler and... This is and you can also have fun with your lighthouse because if you think of I mean this is a, a fairly standard red and white lighthouse that I've done, but if you think of actual real lighthouses from one lighthouse to the next, they're very different. So you really can play around with the idea of your lighthouse. And a hot, hot air balloon is, the shape is pretty much a circle with like a little triangle piece underneath it and then just below that a, a basket. So that will give you your hot air balloon shape. Um, so while we, um, while you are sketching your hot air balloons and your mountains and everyone else is doing it in pencil, um, can you, uh, you know, we always take a little moment of time while everyone's listening and painting just to find out a little bit about you. Um, and connect with you and your artwork is so incredibly stylized it's it's like it just sings to my um organized heart <laughs> and my a-type personality because it's just so incredibly aesthetically pleasing and um, what was the inspiration behind um this sort of style or does this style have a name or a niche I think I'm not entirely sure well, I think it falls under many different things. This particular type of landscape would fall under naive art, um, <laughs> which is actually, I mean, if people always think I'm being funny when I say that, but it is a, 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 an actual thing. Um, if you look at a lot of folk art, I love folk art, um, which is pretty much art done by, by people who are crafters or hobbyists who don't necessarily have any art training at all. There's a very um, famous American folk artist called Grandma Moses, 
who mm -hmm. she was, I mean, she, she, she became incredibly famous. She only started painting in like her 80s or something crazy like that. She'd done a lot of needlework and she found as her hands were getting more arthritic, she could no longer do needlework and she took to painting and, and became a world famous painter for the sort of naive folk art, beautiful stuff. Um, and yeah, it's just, it's, it's different to what one would call fine art or photorealistic art in that it can be quirky and, and fun and, and um, I think often has a sense of humor in it, which I really appreciate. Yes, I do too. It's beautiful. Grandma Moses' art is gorgeous. I've just Googled it. It's incredible. It's Anybody there who doesn't, hasn't heard of Grandma Moses, it's, it really is. is she's, she's phenomenal. And I mean, I'm, I'm guessing how she could have been in her 70s, not her 80s, but it was relatively late in her life that she actually took to painting and, you know, has become this real icon. Oh, lovely. I have shared um, the link to the Wikipedia page in the chat, and I know that everyone's painting right now, but all of these links and references, maybe, you know, whenever you have a moment, you can always jot them down at some points, but I, I recommend taking a look at this Grandma Moses art, it's gorgeous. <laughs> yeah, she's, I mean, hers is a lot more detailed than anything I do. She does all sorts of things with lots of very fine detail in her work. Yeah, lots of farm work, it seems, as well. Okay. Um, has anybody got any questions at this stage? Want to pop their mic? On, show us their painting or um, pop their question into the chat bar. Do you let us know if you do. Oh, this is something else I tend to do a lot of is because I, I do normally work flat is I don't have my painting just sitting one way on an easel while I work it is I often and whether you're working on an easel you can still do this just move it around and you know, it's, it makes it easier, depending on whether you're right-handed or left-handed or which way your brush strokes are going, to actually just move the canvas to best suit instead of awkwardly trying to move your brush. Oh, looking lovely. Looks like there's a, a storm building to the left of Thank me. you. <laughs> I've been excited Steve, about you this your artwork. I've been excited about this piece for way There you go. So, so, got some nice, oh, I'll put it the right way around. Got some nice <laughs> clouds happening. My ocean. Near the bottom of the sky That's there. Nice. Awesome. <laughs> Thanks. While I've got my blue out, I'm now going to continue onto my. My C. Now the C would be the opposite to the sky if you do want to grade the blue, that it's we're actually going to have it sort of paler on the horizon line and the colour getting slightly more intense as it gets closer to you. And is that just adding less white into it's your just, blue? It's just it's less white. So you can see my palette's actually, instead of mixing one solid color, I've got the darker blue and the white, and in the middle is where I'm sort of either pulling from the darker blue or the lighter blue. The other thing that doesn't really necessarily show up on the camera, but that you might be noticing on your own canvas, is that in places, even if you feel as if you're putting on a lot of paint, it might look quite transparent and see-through. Now, often with my finished pieces, they land up actually being two, three, four layers of paint thick, that I, I paint the whole canvas, and then I actually go back and paint over it again, um, because acrylics can be very transparent, um, especially when you look up close. So if you want to get a really solid cover coverage, you know, it, it doesn't help to just put thicker because as the brush pushes, you'll have thick patches and thin patch, patches. 
So you've actually just got to build it up in layers. Once it's dry, go in and, and paint over the, the patchy bits again. It's also nice because you can, when you go, come in the second time, you can also cover up if there are any little mistakes you've made or something. You can slowly adjust it. So mm -hmm. this, which is always good. There's always got to be like a get up clause or some way you can fix it. Oh, and then it's possibly a good idea to look at it straight on and just check that your horizon line is straight. That's always like the sign of a bad photographer or something, you know, when the horizon's going at an angle. So <laughs> just check that where the, the ocean meets the sky, that it's, it's at least a horizontal line. Sorry, I know you can't see the canvas when I'm holding it this way. I just want to get my horizon line in a bit straighter. Let me get a sense from our participants, just by means of putting a thumb up or thumbs down. How um, are you guys at this stage yet? Um, do you need us to slow down? Put a thumbs up if you need us to slow down. Let's try that. No? Oh, we're all good. All right. <laughs> Fantastic. Okay. Brilliant. Um, now, as far as on my instructions, I did have it that the next step was going in and um, doing like the wipes at the lighthouses and things. If your sky isn't dry yet, rather just leave it um, for the moment. You can carry on working down. And then once your sky is dry, then we can go back and do that. But I see mine is fairly dry. So now for things like the, the solid white and the hot air balloons, I'm going to definitely want more than just the one layer. So I'm going to start by putting some white in there now and then continue working and then go back up again later to finish them off. I'm just giving myself some extra white here that's clean and not covered in blue okay. splodges. So we did have some, um, we did have Louise let us know that it's a little bit too fast paced um, for her at this stage. So um, I suggest maybe we just carry on with the step that we're at and then I'll ask a question and we'll allow her to catch up. Cool. I, um, I will, I've got the second screen here and I can see everybody painting and exactly what they're doing. It's sort of like Big Brother's watching. <laughs> it's a little bit um, <laughs> um, weird maybe, but but um, if you need anything at all, or if you need me to slow down, I can see I can see you. So you just let leave, you just let me know. Um, so Tuesday, um, where did the where did your art career begin? Um, let's let's hear a little bit about you and your your art journey. Well, it's one of those funny things people sort of say, how long have you been painting? And, you know, I think if anybody was to correctly answer that, it's I've been painting since I was three because, um, you know, <laughs> that's when I first started, same as, <laughs> as probably anyone at, at <clears throat> kindergarten. Um, I don't actually have formal training as an artist. I did study fashion design and um, part of that was sort of fashion drawing um, and, and th that, that kind of painting. Um, and I've worked in all sorts of different media and, um, yeah, it's just over the years, really, I've, I've, I'm very bad at distracting myself with new ideas or new materials or wanting to learn new stuff. So I have worked in all sorts of things. For a long time, I, I worked in glass. Actually, before I even started painting professionally, I was doing kiln-formed glass um, oh, wow. And, and the, That's really the, interesting. Yeah, which is totally different. Sort of doing functional art. So I was doing unique one-off glass pieces but that you could use every day. Um, I love that idea that 
you know, art doesn't necessarily just have to be a painting on the wall that you see, but then after a while sort of forget about because it's always there. Um, I love the idea of having beautiful things, but that you, you can use and enjoy that are, are tactile. Um, so the glass had that. And then painting just started as a, as a sideline hobby. Um, and I actually had, was definitely just a hobby. I had like a garage full of canvases stacked up against the wall that I'd, I'd done but never done anything with. And then a friend of mine actually had an exhibition at the Baxter, mm -hmm. um, a ceramicist friend of mine. And he said, well, you've got all these paintings. Why don't you come and exhibit with me? And I thought, oh, well, you know, why not? But it, it was also quite daunting because, uh, as I say, I mean, my paintings had just been stacked in the garage. I hadn't done anything with them. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, I landed up being seen by one of the local Cape Town galleries, the Lisa King Gallery. She saw my stuff and bought several pieces from that exhibition for her gallery. And at the time, I was looking at something to new, to, new to do, and it was almost like a, a leap of faith. Just started painting full time. Um, yeah, and wow. and from there, it's grown and evolved. I mean, my work then was very different to what I'm painting now. It really has changed over the years. I've been painting professionally for probably about fifteen years now. Okay. Wow. Wow. So just walk us through, um, I see that you're filling in some of your um, pencil lines in with white. Yeah, for things like the, the lighthouse and where I'm going to do like the, the, yellow, the yellow hot air balloon and stuff, if I was to paint the yellow, which is very transparent, straight onto the blue sky, it will just stand up looking like a, a, a messy, funny green. So I'm just giving myself almost like a, a blank canvas within the canvas to paint those bits by filling them in, in in white to begin with. I'll come back and do them later once this is all dry. Um, but for now, it's just makes it much easier when it comes to adding the details to those if it's on a plain white bit instead of Okay, fantastic. On, on and um, Michelle has quite a good question here. She says, I see you paint the lighthouse completely with white, and in the notes it said not to fill in the red area. So is it okay? Oh. <laughs> that, you can, you can uh, <laughs> as I said, adjust it to yourself. Sorry, it's, it's a silly thing. Sometimes I do it one way, sometimes I do it another. So you know what? It's not, there's nothing is, is cast in stone. Um, it's, it's one of those I should maybe be following my step by step because it, it is from, well, I suppose this way you get to see that it, it can be done different ways. I, I don't have one set thing that I, I do every single time. Um, but it is white, so you can always just, I mean, it is just white and, spreading just a base. And it is paint, paint it. And, and that's the nice thing about paint. If you get it wrong or something's not right, you can paint over it. You know, while it's still wet, you can even wipe it away with a, a wet wipe or something or wait for it to dry and then you can change it completely by painting over it. So it's... Okay. Yeah. Okay, well, that, that's great. So we have a couple of people still coming in to the session, which is quite nice. Lovely. Um, and then Michelle says, I see it's less transparent if white will be behind the red. Yes. Um, that's my take on it. Yes, absolutely. Um, uh, certain colors are more transparent than others. And I've found with acrylic paints, regardless of what brand you're using, things like the, the paler yellow can be very transparent. Actually, for this time, and I definitely didn't do it in the no, so I'm actually even going to just put a bit of white under where the roof is because it's probably going to be easier to get the the red when I come in and do that if it has some white there. Um, the other thing I do is not just by putting white underneath here now is you'll see as I do the, the different colors is I always add a bit of white 
into whatever color it is I'm using, unless it's black, of course, because then you'd land up with a, a sort of pale, pale gray. But any of the actual mm -hmm. colors, um, you know, even even if I decide I'm going to use that exact green, it won't be that exact green because I always put a bit of white in. It just makes it more solid. And mm -hmm. uh, although so it's bright I colors. I do have another yeah. question. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry, sorry. Uh, apologies, Tuesday. There no, seems to be a delay. Ahead. No, no. Okay. I was going to say, even though, you know, even though my paintings are very bright, somehow the the neat acrylic colors are even more garish. So by by adding just that little bit of white, it kind of tones it down into an acceptable range, I think, of, of brightness. <laughs> Oh, it makes perfect sense. Um, Louise asks, Tuesday, how do I get my horizon straight? So she's still <laughs> working on her horizon. How does she get it straight? Um, well, you're not going to worry about the horizon painting your sky down because um, you you can paint over it with the sky. But as you bring your – actually, now's a good test to see if mine is straight. Probably the easiest is to find something with a square edge. Mm, your step-by-step -step guide. Your step-by-step -step guide. And if you place it again – oh, I've not done too badly. If you place it against the edge <laughs> <laughs> of your painting – it'll give you a set square and with that you'll be able to see if you've managed to get that at a good 90 degree angle. <laughs> no, yours is pretty perfect. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm pleased myself there. It's like, well, phew, funny. thank goodness. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I could have had to spend the next 15 minutes correcting it otherwise, you know. <laughs> Either that or it's all it's all it's all trickery with camera angles, you know. <laughs> Smoke and mirrors. <laughs> okay. Um, how is everyone feeling? Is everyone um, at this stage once you know they've penciled in their outlines, they've filled in all of their spaces with white, they've got their sky and their sea. Um, how many people are at that stage? Let me take a look. Thumbs up if you are. No. Okay. There's quite a few people that are not quite there yet um, Tuesday. So let's ask you yeah. another question. And actually, I'm very excited about this particular question <laughs> the most <laughs> because it's been the your line of artwork that um, has been so amazing. And I'm so curious about it. So you have this octopus range. I mean, every time I look at your art page, um, there is a new painting with an octopus in it. <laughs> so you have this bizarre love for the octopus. Yes. Um, and you know, it's quite trending right now with my octopus teacher on Netflix and, um, and yeah, it's quite on point, I think, at the moment. So please, can you give us a little bit of insight with this love of the octopus and, and this range of octopus artwork that you've been doing? Thanks. Well, I'll, I'll show you some examples first so that people know what we're talking about because they're not necessarily what people expect when you say that you're doing <laughs> octopus paintings. So here, here's one that I did that's called Life's a Beach. Um, but I've brought three along with me, so I'll show you these. This one is, I wrote a letter to my love. Oh, that's my favorite. Oh, that, so that one is, is quite a, I'm quite emotional about this one. It's, it definitely had a lot of meaning for me. Um, and here we've got a message in a bottle as well. So it's, it's all oct octopus arms and doing quirky things. Um, Amazing. Yeah, but it actually started, it did start mostly as, as that sort of style, but without the quirky elements. It was, um, uh, my, my partner was very ill. Uh, he passed away a year and a half ago, but he was very ill for a long time. And I actually found during that time, I started dreaming of octopuses and octopus arms and suckers and but in a nice way a beautiful way it was funny it wasn't like I know some people could imagine that it would be like scary octopus dreams but it wasn't at all like that it was very comforting and I think 
I don't know where it came from, but I think it was possibly a thing of so desperately wanting to hold on to him, um, you know, and, and, and cling on to him as he was sort of slipping away, um, that it, it was, you know, and, and nothing holds on quite like an octopus. <laughs> you know, um, it's like, so that, I think that's where it started. And I did a, a, a few pieces while, while he was still ill, but didn't really work. And then shortly after he passed away and I found I couldn't work at home or anything. And I went to a friend of mine studio to work. He very kindly said that I could go and work there. Um, actually, it's another artist to look up. He is phenomenal. He's a local Cape Town artist called Theo Paul Foster. He does mostly lino prints now. Um, but yeah, I went to work in his studio and started and did a, some octopus mono prints where I was working in oil paint um, on oil paint on paper actually. And from there, it just evolved and grew. And it's you know it's. Well, a good while later and I'm still totally obsessed with octopuses and I don't see it going away anytime soon. <laughs> no, it's, it's actually um, rooted in, there's a lot of um, deeply emotional and beautiful stuff there. Tuesday, thank you so much for sharing that with us. Um, I, it's an absolutely amazing series. I really recommend everyone going to Tuesday's art page and taking a look at it because every single day there's a new octopus and it's <laughs> he's doing something new. <laughs> I mean, what? So, like, what? What? What have you? What? Um, oh gosh, it's have as, as fast as I the do pieces? them, I, I kind of think up new ones. I've got this list now because I can't keep up with my own thoughts on on what to do. Um, you know, so it'll be an octopus with lots of little rubber ducks in a row, so, you know, getting your ducks in a row or, um, you know, I, 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 get a, I get a lot of commissions where people want specific things with their octopus. So, you know, you, and with that, you land up with odd combinations. You know, I don't think I ever would have thought of doing an octopus with proteas. Because you know oh, wow. it's it's sort of quite out there, but mm. that's yeah. what um, someone wanted to take back to mm. Norway with them as a as mm. a commission. You know, she said she wanted my octopuses, but she needed something to remind her of South Africa. So I landed <laughs> up doing octopuses with proteas. So um, <laughs> yeah, and all, all yeah, the the sky's the limit. <laughs> I love the yeah. ones with. Yeah, the... you had one. Sorry, Stevie. Uh, my favorite one is the one with the ironing board and the... Oh, yes, that was in the middle up. of lockdown where <laughs> everybody was doing everything. And, you know, on, on social media, you'll see everybody complaining about having to do, you know, look after kids and be a teacher and still work online. And so, yes, I did a, a multitasker <laughs> one which had all sorts of things. And I was looking at a picture of it the other day and I suddenly realized I forgot to put in a loaf of bread. Everybody was baking during lockdown and I missed, missed the baking bit. So I'm going to have to do another another lockdown one with, with all the banana bread. <laughs> Uh, yes. um, I've shared your link to your art page. I mean, I'm just taking a browse through it now, and it is so amazing. You have one with a washing line with little shorts and socks on it, and uh, it, the range is absolutely amazing. I would highly recommend everyone taking a look at that. And actually, one of the things that I, I think doesn't come across is in a few of them I've got paper airplanes, um, but that's actually also a, a was a, a personal thing that we had these fantastic neighbors who were only here for a short while and they happened to get stuck here in the beginning of lockdown. Um, a Dutch family who um, were living next door with four amazing children. But we had this thing then that we would write each other letters and throw them over the wall, fly them over the wall as paper <laughs> airplanes. And we had this ongoing conversation. Um, and then the one day the kids actually even rigged up a cargo plane out of cardboard with a little box underneath so that they, they could they could start sending cargo over the wall. So, yeah, paper aeroplanes is definitely a symbol for communicating and letter writing for me now. <laughs> Amazing. Okay, we have another question here from Louise. Are those lines and borders in black paint or pencil? Oh, the, that was, they. you just do them in pencil. I did them in the paint here now just so that people could see them because you couldn't see the, 
couldn't see the pencil lines on the camera, but keep keep them in pencil. And although the paint will cover it up, try and keep them neat because otherwise you're going to have extra patchy bits where it might show through. So. Mm. Yeah, I think um, Stevie, let's take a look at where you're at because I think you're quite a nice middle ground between those that. Oh my gosh, that, uh, very I'm average. Not, I've been super entertained by Tuesday's stories that I've just. There we go. Taking that's... it very slow. <laughs> okay. So please do not use me as a there benchmark. It looks like some, okay, some great. monument. Well, know. yours is looking quite good. I like your very narrow um, hot air balloons. Thanks, Alex. I mean, this might be a little Christmas gift for you. <laughs> <laughs> I'll hang it behind my bathroom door. Okay. <laughs> Hidden by her dressing gown. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Um, so, can we move on to the next step? How's everyone feeling? Thumbs up if we can. Yes? I'm getting a nod. I have a few thumbs up. Okay. I think we can move on to the next. Okay. We are, we're doing it at, at a bit of a different pace, but I, but this is okay. It's working. It's working. It's working really well. <laughs> I'm just, well, I mean, the next step is it's all fairly self-explanatory because I'm just working from the top down now and then only at the end will I, I go back and fill in more of the details. And my little beach line I'm not going to use the plain yellow. You'll see when you're using these paints, the yellow really is very transparent. Um, and so even on its own, if you paint it, it looks streaky. So yellow always gets white in with it. And then what I'm going to do, once I've mixed the yellow and white, A little like pastel yellow, but it's actually, if you think of beach sand, it's not yellow, it's more of a beigey color. We're going to go for something slightly more peachy. I'm going to take the tiniest little bit of red, but tiny, tiny. I've just actually done it on the end of my tip of my brush and see my bristles there so you can see you can always add more you can't take it away so I'm just going to add a teeny tiny bit of red there I'm going to add a little bit more and it just makes the the pale yellow more like a, a peachy color I'm going to paint in my little beach line. Now, again, if you want to have a bigger beach, you know, some people are beachier than others. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, bad pun. Um, <laughs> but feel free to change it. Then while I've got that colour all mixed and fresh before I sort of accidentally go and messed up something, um, I'm just going to paint in the little road as well. We're going to add extra shadowing and stuff to it later because it, this pale colour, I think you definitely would need more than one coat, but at least it gets that first bit painted in. I'm 
must say, I'm quite impressed with these canvases. Mm. They've got a nice smooth finish to them. Yeah, they're nice, good quality. Yeah, some some canvases that you get can be very difficult to sort of push paint around on, whereas these, it glides on nicely. Now you'll see here probably on the camera what I was saying about because I haven't put any white there and my blue had actually from the sky had gone down below my line. So you'll see that, let me see if you can see, not brilliantly, but you can see a bit of a, the blue through the, the yellow, but I'm not going to worry about that because as soon as it's dried properly, I can just come in and put another coat. And even if I don't mix the exact same color, if I have to remix it and it's a slightly different shade, that also doesn't matter. That just sort of adds to the depth of it, so long as it's within the same kind of color range as what I've put down the first time. Oh, here's something else I sometimes do. Like there, I made a sudden little bit of a mess. Is I take a clean brush, it's just damp and I can wipe away the bit of mess that I did mm. while it's still wet. Nice tip. Yep, handy mm. tip. Even the pros mess up more regularly than they'd probably want to admit to. <laughs> what, are, what do we call them in, in the trade? Happy accidents. <laughs> Unmuted. <laughs> nice little hum. <laughs> no, I'm just thinking, can anybody sing a good song? Mm. We can. That's something I've been doing during lockdown. Is um, choir. been doing online choirs. I sing in in when we were still young and free. Um, <laughs> I used to sing with the Cape Town Philharmonia Choir, and then of course that all very promptly stopped in lockdown and there were lots of virtual choirs. Philharmonia is now also um, doing online rehearsals but in the beginning they didn't have any rehearsals and a friend of mine who sings Barbershop in the UK, so, which is that like four-part quartet mm. singing, um, mm. she sent me a link mm. for an online virtual choir, an international choir which I then joined, and I think I've now done four different recordings with them, and it has been the most fantastic process, though totally bizarre. I mean, oh, wow. to be singing in a choir, which is very much a group thing, <laughs> but you're actually sitting alone. It drives my kids mad. I was just about to ask. Yeah, no, my kids can't <laughs> stand it, because they've got me caterwauling in the room upstairs with headphones on, so... <laughs> <laughs> so they don't hear the rest of the great stuff. They just got to put up with me. But we've done these these fantastic. Yeah, it's been actually with the, it's not so much the recordings that have been fun. The whole just the process and the the camaraderie because they have these rehearsals online. They have these get-togethers, and now they even have like quiz nights and all sorts of things through the choir. <laughs> and it's also, I mean, you'll you'll be in a rehearsal and there'll be. Someone from New Zealand, uh, I'm trying to think, I've got new friends in New Zealand, I've got a friend in Turkey now through there, friend in Spain, Canada, America, so it really is, it'll be all different time zones. So somebody will be there in their pyjamas with their 5am cup of coffee, someone else will be there sort of with their, their evening gin and tonic. <laughs> <laughs> it's been brilliant.
That is brilliant. That oh. is uh, you would never think. No, because you think that there might be delays and stuff. So well, whilst that's, <laughs> you're that's seeing it. a verse, someone's like three verses back. No, well, there are delays, which actually makes it even more <laughs> bizarre. So you see everybody with the delays, but then as far as the actual um, sound goes, you don't sing together as a group. So each person mutes themselves, and you sing to uh -huh. a guide track. So everybody's singing to the same guide track that's being broadcast, but you're all, oh, wow. actually, you're all actually on mute. And then as far as the recordings are concerned, everybody submits their own recording, which is done to the guide track, and then they actually splice them all together, overlay them so that everybody mm. is singing in time. Oh, fantastic. But for the, the nice. video side, the video recording is done over Zoom, and you can actually see from that that there are time delays, that one person's mouth's doing this while somebody else is looking out the window, and, you know, it's <laughs> <laughs> all very real. Um, actually, do you want to take a look at um, everyone's pieces? Yes, um, let's see where, where, where we're at. So and see where everyone's at. So... For those that do have their cameras on, and if you don't have your camera on, you're welcome to put it on, but you don't have to. Um, just show us your piece so that we can see where you're at. And then um, oh, okay. Stevie's going to help Tuesday just on so that she technical can take it side. <laughs> and then that way we have a good idea of where everyone's at. Oh, that's so looking now, lovely. Michelle, you've got your road and your beach and, your, and everything. That looks lovely. And Cheryl, yours also Oh, looks fantastic. Great. And Louis, everyone's and colors Cheryl. for the, the road, and that looks good as well. Yeah. We can see yours, um, Kate. Yours looks much bigger. Do you Are you on a bigger canvas, or are you on the one that we got gave you in the box? Oh, shame. Yeah, you have to come and mute <laughs> your mic. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I decided to use a bigger canvas. <laughs> Lovely. Good for you. Awesome. Super. Okay, so it looks like everyone's pretty much the way there, Tisha. Yeah, good. Well, I'm just going to carry on down with the with the fields. Um, now, I don't paint in the detail to begin with. The, the details all come in afterwards. So I'm actually just going to paint in solid green, but each field is going to be a, a slightly different shade of green to distinguish between them. Um, I mean, you don't actually even have to do them all green. You can have fun. If you look at a lot of the sort of naive artist sort of fields and things, they often have very colorful fields as if from a distance, if you were looking at fields, you know, a canola field would, would actually look all yellow or a lavender field would look all purple. So um, you can have fun with color. Otherwise, just with the green, mix some white in with your basic green. And then for some of the, the lighter ones, you can mix in a bit of a, a yellow to make a more yellowy green. Um, if you want a deeper green, then add a bit of blue to your green. Um, I usually start with one field and then I, I kind of adjust the green as I go, adding to it as I, as I go down. So I'm gonna start with quite a, a bright green on my, my first top field. And this one is just the, the green that, that you've got with white added to it. And you'll see here I have actually turned my canvas around because I'm just finding it easier to get this line between the, the beach and the and the field in that just with with the canvas at that angle so that I'm not working awkwardly. So do move it as to however you find most comfortable. Mm -hmm. 
And I think on this one, I'm finding it more than any of the other colors so far. I'm actually finding this the most transparent. So I'll definitely be coming back after it's dry to do another light green coat over it. So whilst you're painting um, your green fields and everybody else is painting their fields, whatever colours they would like to, um, tell us about, I mean, you are quite the power mom Tuesday. <laughs> Good about <laughs> that. You have beautiful children <laughs> um, and you live in an amazing place in Nurduk. Um, How are your kids influenced by you as an artist or um, how do they influence your artwork? Bit of a multi-question. Multi-question. Um, well, to start at the beginning is how they influence my artwork is actually the, the very first lot of paintings that I started doing that um, when we exhibited at the Baxter were um, just like my, my, my happy bubble people. Um, there were paintings I, I did just for the fun of it, really, really huge canvases with um, very, very stylized bubble people, which was based on a, a picture my son, age three, had actually done of me, a little portrait. And you can imagine what a three-year-old drawing is like. And from that, although they were different, but it, it actually had evolved from that. And for some reason, I mean, they were so super stylized, um, but something about it just seemed to appeal to people. And, and yeah, I painted, painted my happy bubble people for quite a while. Um, so, yeah, that was a direct influence of, of, of my children. And then, Greg, mm -hmm. I think it's just that thing. I think if you've got any creatives in a, in a household, you know, things like fancy dress is great fun. <laughs> you know, we all have fun making costumes for for when they were at school, school events or, you know, Halloween, which I know is slowly taking off in South Africa, which wasn't so much when they were little. Yeah. Um, but we always had great fun making stuff and creating stuff. And um, my son's actually now studying graphic design, so I think that definitely, you know, it's it's he's also interested mm -hmm. in that so side of things. Oh, mm. And my, my daughter's studying teaching, and, and but a lot of that um, is is also quite creative when she's putting together lesson plans and, and doing various projects and, and things. So, <clears throat> yeah, there's always something happening at home. Nice. A nice little creative um, family <laughs> unit there. I had someone years ago uh, say something that... Um, it <laughs> stuck with me. Is he came to visit? There was a, a family friend who used to visit quite regularly, and he came in the one day and he said, "I love your dining room table." And I kind of looked at it and I thought, "But it's just an ordinary dining room table." He said, "No, no, no, not the actual table." He says, "Do you know I've visited here seven times, and every time there's been something different. The first time I came, you were painting, and then the second time I came, there was sewing all over the table, and then the third time I came, you were busy making play-doh, and then the fourth time, and he had this whole <laughs> list of things. And he says, "I just love this table," and I thought, "What a wonderful analogy! Actually, it was is, is just our dining room table and and." everything that happened around it and um, although I've always been a firm believer in family meals um, how often we landed up having family meals around the lounge table because the dining room table was <laughs> occupied by other projects <laughs> that's so nice yeah your kids are wonderful oh thank they you really Steve are. so respectful no, they are. We and Oh, so I'm, I'm biased, very, but I am very proud of them. They we were very um, privileged to be able to go to Tuesday's house one day. She invited us for supper, and then um, she, we did an artwork, one of these gorgeous hillside. I can't exactly remember what the artwork was. It was quite a few years ago. Um, and then we all did it together, like... A family. It was actually so amazing around the the creative dining room table. It was really special. Very, very special. It was a lovely evening. It was. 
oh, well, these call to care guys always land up being working and don't get to have any of the fun. So they needed to have a fun <laughs> evening. <laughs> and That's then when we actually sat down and started painting, I realized, oh, I, I'm not very um, artistic. <laughs> <laughs> you need more wine. <laughs> exactly. Um, so Louise says, please remind me how to mix the various greens. Yes, so the green, well, if you go back to real basics of painting, is green is basically the blue and yellow together. But I found with acrylic paints, if you paint, try and mix your own green just from blue and yellow, it's incredibly difficult and you often get a very grungy green. So it's nice to actually start with the, the ready mixed green. Um, it is quite transparent, so add a, a little bit of white into your ready mixed green. Um, and then for a, a brighter, more yellowy green, add yellow. And for the darker greens, you add blue. Um, with something like adding the blue, because it's quite an intense deep blue, um, add it at just a little bit at a time, otherwise it's going to totally overpower the green. Um, so, so just a, a, adjust it, but sort of adjust it with a little bit of paint at a time until you get the, the shade that you want. I'm also doing the silly thing now of using the tiniest paintbrush for the biggest area, which is very silly. Do, <laughs> do use a, an appropriately sized paintbrush for what you're doing. Ah. And you'll see here as well as I didn't mix quite enough green for this, but it's fine. You sort of mix more and it doesn't matter if it matches because you're going to slowly blend over some extra colors. So I'll just mix a, an approximation of that green. to continue that field. How's your artwork doing there, Steve? Um, it's looking great. You no, know, you should be great. very excited. <laughs> you, you, Chris, oh, yes, coming. Right. coming to me, that's coming fair, together. that is exciting, that is. Can I have a quick little sneak peek, please, <laughs> of my final piece? <laughs> I'm a few steps oh, behind. I keep doing that upside down. Here we go. Oh, I like your golden sands. Yeah, nice. he's got very golden. His, his has got a, a nice afternoon glow. Mm -hmm. Ooh, I like, I like it. Like a soul. <laughs> Looking great, Steve. Thank you. I'm excited. <laughs> Now, according to like proper artists, um, you shouldn't shouldn't really use your brush to mix colors, but I must say I always do. I know that um, you know if you're a proper professional, you're supposed to use a palette knife, but I, I don't know. It's something I've I've never gotten the hang of. I always land up mixing with with my actual brush. I have seen that. Like Bob Ross does that. I mean, I sometimes watch his stuff just to relax. Yeah. And he does the mixing colors with um, the palette knife. Why is that? Is it because it just sort of blends easier? I think or? you supposedly get a better mix because if you're mixing with the brush, you know, the, 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 diff the different colors you're mixing could get stuck between the bristles and not actually mix oh. with each other. But, okay, there I did a bit of mixing with the... But no, I, I still just mix with a brush, though. It's it's what I have in my hand at the time, you know. So it's, <laughs> it's a bit light, add a bit more blue. How is everyone feeling? How is everyone doing? Who wants to pop on their mic and tell us how they feel about their artwork or just generally how is your day going or anything? You're always welcome to just chat to us. 
Everyone is deep in deep concentration. In concentration. Well, I suppose that's a good sign too. And that's the best sign. <clears throat> that is the best sign. They look like they're loving it. I'd love to check how Maureen is doing. Mm -hmm. Maureen George. If you can just um, unmute yourself and say hi. <laughs> Stephen, if you don't... <laughs> Maureen, Maureen, we really don't have to if you don't We'd want love to hear from you. Uh, <laughs> Shame, Steve. Shame. It's nice. It's nice having people where you recognise the names, though. Yes, because Stevie is picking on Maureen for for <laughs> good reason there. <laughs> <laughs> so, for context of everyone in the house, because now everyone's very curious, <laughs> why Maureen? Um, Maureen is um, Lauren's mum, and Lauren is a new addition to our. Paints and Sip team. It's absolutely amazing. She is the powerhouse behind the packaging of the products, the marketing of the product, um, and pretty much the reason why you have your paints and sips delivered to your door and the amazingness of this entire experience is thanks to Lauren. So um, thank you, Lauren, and thank you, for Maureen, for giving birth to Lauren. <laughs> <laughs> um, now we put everyone. She's very on shy. <laughs> well, even if she wasn't, she is now that you put her on the spot. Louise <laughs> <laughs> uh, says she's absolutely lovely. She delivered twice for me. Oh, you're a hit, Lauren. You're a hit. <laughs> <clears throat> But I'm in quiet, so it's great. Is this camera moving around? I seem to be getting more table edges. It's fine, but I'm just. <laughs> Oh no, it's not table edge. It's actually just the edge of the screen. I'm looking onto a second, a second oh, screen. That's all. I tell you, you'd think by at this stage after lockdown, I'd be used to Zoom and screens and computers and things, but no. But it's also as soon as you get used to one platform. Like you'll get used to Zoom, and then all of a sudden everyone's using some other platform. Oh, we'll change <laughs> like, well, now I don't know how to install this, and I don't know how to access this video conference. It's like just the industry is absolutely boomed. If you have had shares in Zoom, you're very happy. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> And I'd like to point out, I've just managed to mess up my white by putting <clears> some green in it, which is also something as a professional you should definitely never do. Just go in and mess up your pots of colour with other colours, but hey. <laughs> <clears throat> Well, we love to keep it real here. Exactly, it's very real. We can edit that bit out later. <laughs> you, can go no. to the, you can go to the blooper reel. <laughs> No, no need. I think authenticity is the best. <laughs> that's, you know, that's the thing. Like, art seems like a very intimidating prospect for many because um, it always, well, especially with very professional artists, 
they make it look a little bit easier than it is. Um, but when you get down to basics and you do it little bit by little bit, then actually anyone can create a really pretty artwork. And there really is no set right and wrong on on how to do things. You know, for any way that, that one person does it, there'll probably be hundreds of other ways to do it. Um, you know, and that, that's the thing is actually just to have fun and, and remember that it's just paint. So, yeah, it's not that important. If it doesn't work, you paint over it or start mm. again or, or just keep going. There's, exactly. There's often it is a, it's a creative expression, mm. isn't it? So it's supposed to be very individualistic. I know there's another dear friend of mine, a painter, who, who gives a lot of workshops and things as well, um, Derek van Rensburg, and he's had this thing when I, every now and again I'll go and gate crash one of his workshops and, and sit at the back. <coughs> and he'll, his first thing would always be just ignore anything Tuesday does or says because it's completely wrong because it's like completely different to how he does it. <laughs> so... <laughs> <laughs> and we do. I mean, we work, we've done a lot of live painting sessions together as well, but work completely differently. So it's all good. Yeah, no, it is. That's why we, we love to feature different artists every month mm -hmm. because um, every artist has its, its own flair and I think you can learn a lot from everyone else's styles. Absolutely. And I, I think, I mean, I still attend all sorts of workshops and things. I love doing it because I think, you know, and, and not necessarily in the medium that you're working in, because if you're working in acrylics, by learning new watercolor techniques or something, you might find something where there's a crossover and, and actually changes how you work or oil painting. You know, you, you'd learn different techniques and different styles and things. And all of them can sort of blend and merge together until you actually find your own style. And I think that's the biggest thing. There's nothing wrong with um, copying other people and learning from them, but to actually take it to the point that you make it your own, you develop it into your, your own little style, is, is it's a great journey to be on. Mm. Absolutely. No, that's really looking lovely, Tuesday. Oh, thank you. So this idea that the camera adds 10 pounds, which I know they, they mean it's about people. It actually seems to be about paint as well. I must say, it, what I'm seeing on the screen <laughs> looks looks quite different to what it is in, in sort of in person. It looks much patchier in real life than it's <laughs> showing on the screen. So basically what I'm trying to say to any of you, if yours is super patchy, don't worry about it. That's actually what mine's like as well at the moment. The camera seems to be quite forgiving. I'm very excited um, to see everyone else's interpretation of those um, like cascading colors there. It's going to be lovely to see the different colors because you can be as creative as you want to. We went to Darling last weekend or the weekend before and the amount of purple hills that you could see for as far um, <laughs> as your eyes could see, was so amazing. It's really a nice season. Um, and 
you know, a nice time to be very creative. You can do pink and purple and blue and whatever heels you want, really. We do live in such an incredibly beautiful part of the world as well. I don't know if everybody attending right now is from Cape Town, but, I mean, we're just so lucky with, with everything that's right on our doorstep. Yeah, we are. We really are spoiled. And and it changes, you know, from one season to the next. There's there's always something to go and see or experience or enjoy. It's true. And if it's very windy in one part of Cape Town, you know you can enjoy the other. So if you have a very windy, um, you know, if you're in Hout Bay or Constantia or the Atlantic Seaboard or Fells Bay and it's very windy, you just have to go to the northern suburbs. <laughs> Well, you can enjoy a wine farm. Well, I must it's say very it's calm. You just different. go down to the seaside. No, it's completely different here. It's Steve's this afternoon than it was at home at my yeah. place. And Nootuk is like winter today. There was thick mist, very thick mist and, and drizzly rain and very low cloud cover. And then I got here and it's quite windy, but there's blue patches of sky and high clouds. So it's mm. a totally different climate this side. No, it is. It is. And on our side, we've got quite a bit of wind, a little bit of cloud, but like it's actually really pleasant. Like it's a nice day to go outside and hang out in the garden or whatever. Well, you know that saying, it's, there's no such thing as bad weather. There's only bad choice of outfit. And I think, you know, <laughs> so long as you're prepared, there's no th such thing as bad weather. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> True. <laughs> Now, the other thing that I'm always amazed at when we do the, the big group classes is how different everybody's palettes are. I tend to get like, spread and land up with several palettes with paint all over the place as I'm mixing. And then you have other people, like my sister-in-law, and hers looks like something that would be used in a magazine photo shoot of a paint palette with perfect little round dollops of each colour that she, she somehow manages to keep that neat. I don't know. <laughs> Each to their own. <laughs> yeah, my paint palettes, whenever I paint, is a mess. Like all the colours end up merging and it just becomes quite a murky, like brown or grey at the end of it in the middle. <laughs> well, you land up wearing a lot of it. A number of times I've gone somewhere and I haven't realised that I've got a big dollop of paint in my hair. <laughs> or something like you scratch, you scratch the side that. of your nose and, and next thing you spend the rest of your day walking around with this big blue blob <coughs> and everybody's too polite to tell you. <sighs> You're very about that, especially having to... Um, set up these in-person paint and sip events. Whew. The set down is generally the messiest. We actually had our first in-person paint and sip event um, not so long ago, I would say maybe two to three weeks ago, with Tuesday at Cafe Roo. And it was really successful. I mean, actually, we did our social distancing. Everyone wore their masks as much as you do at a restaurant, which is, I suppose, not very much. But, um, <laughs> and then, and um, it was actually really, really amazing. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to us going back to a little bit to the way that it was. But I do enjoy these sessions too. It's strange how one, how I didn't realise how used to not being around people I've become, because I must say, as much as I loved that session, for like two days afterwards, I was almost like overpeopled, overstimulated. You know, it had been, it had been so weird to be out of the confines of home and amongst proper three-dimensional beings. 
Yeah, that's true. Um, Louise says she'd love to be back at Daria. Oh, you and me both, Louise. Shame. Daria got hit so hard from COVID because they're a function venue. And you can imagine no one's doing weddings or functions during this time. We did ask them if we could come back and um, and have a paint and sip, but they are very good to us. They sponsor a lot of... Um, they sponsor the venue, you know, a lot of their staff come on site volunteering. And unfortunately, right now, they just can't afford to do so. So we won't be back at Daria for a while. Let's hope that, let's hold thumbs for this vaccine next year so we can all go back to normal. But yes, I miss Daria so much. It was wonderful. Lovely being venue. There. Very nice venue. Yeah, that's beautiful. We were very fortunate. On the day that the lockdown was announced was our last um, in-person event at Daria. Full house, 150 people. <laughs> so, I mean, we were cleaning up and we were still pa washing paintbrushes when um, President Ramaphosa was saying his speech Oh, and then, then I cried a little bit, so I won't lie. Because <laughs> you just know what you're in for. <laughs> uh, but it's, I'm happy to see we're sort of coming out the other side a little bit. I mean, we're still naturally, COVID's still there, but um, we've all adapted and we're adjusting. And it looks a bit hopeful. I think that vaccine's around the corner. Or at least I'm an idealist anyway. Just... <laughs> taking the really glass full approach to the Always whole thing. Always good to look on the bright side. <clears throat> okay, I'm very excited to see everybody's rolling hills and the colours that they have. And I'd also like to get a, a little understanding of where everyone's at so we can see hi, Louise. Nice. I'd love to see you in Marshall. Yeah, lovely, Cheryl. Oh, I see you've actually finished all your hills. Oh, that's nice. Lovely, lovely. Um, Renata, um, I'd love to see yours. Oh, Kate's just done hers. Oh, yours, yours looks awesome. And I mean, yours is also very big, Kate, so you are working very quickly. Nice. Michelle, yours looks lovely. You've, everyone's decided on the green pastures. <laughs> Has anybody got any other colours or any other, have they experimented with any other colour? Has anyone put in an alien spacecraft? <laughs> <laughs> Renata, how is yours looking? This is Steve, how are you? <laughs> oh, yes, are you well, Renata? She's on, she's on mute. You're on mute. Oh, you can just nice. press the, the mm. space bar. I say they're all looking fantastic. Mm. So I'm unmuted. Hi. You might regret you never offered this. <laughs> <laughs> no, yours looks lovely. I, I want What's you from? I want you purple, but... Um, but um, I, I didn't know how to mix purple. Oh, well, that you must just ask. I can, I can tell you. <laughs> mm. Yes, how do we mix purple so these days? Purple, Maybe you can do it for the bottom parts of your mm. heels, Renata. Purple would, purple is okay. actually quite difficult to mix, I must say, with, with acrylics. Um, but, it, oh. pur, but again, if you start with white, quite a bit of white, you should be able to get a mauve Color. So if you start with your white and just purple would be blue and red. Um, but if you start with the white and do a little bit of the blue and then put in a little bit of red, you should be able to get a. It's one of those things that you must just play with and keep adding and blending until you get the Color, but it's going to give more of a grayish movie color here. But that could be an, an interesting lavender field. Hmm. Something like that. You see that color there. Oh, there you go. Coming. 
because quite a mauvey purple. So that's starting with the white base and then just a little drop of the blue and a little drop of the red. And then, of course, depending on if you add more of the blue, it will be more of a bluey purple. If you add more of the red, it would be more pink, <clears throat> pinky purple. So just play around with quantities of that. <coughs> Lovely. Okay, so it looks like most people um, are just about there with um, their fields, but maybe maybe we can give them a, a minute or two. I see that Renata was about 80% of the way there, and there are a few people that are just finishing off those nice bold colors by adding a few extra layers. So, Tuesday, I know you have a, a Facebook page. Um, do you have any other platforms? I do have or do you Instagram. Lessons or? I, I, I actually haven't been teaching lately. I used to teach. Um, mm -hmm. Since we've moved, I've no longer got a, a teaching studio, so I, I haven't been other than, you know, workshops like this. Um, mm yeah, but who, who knows, I might, you know, I've always enjoyed, the nice thing about teaching is actually just interacting with people, because um, being an artist can be very reclusive, um, which I love, I mean, I, I get lost in my own little world, I'll, I'll be the first to admit to anyone that I live in a bubble, you know, totally in my own little world, um, but it is nice to venture out every now and again and and actually communicate with with real life people so <laughs> yeah i do enjoy teaching and you have an instagram page did you say i've got an instagram page which i've become better at at posting on i must say i i didn't used to be in the past so it's sort of a bit patchy the amount of information you get on there but i am mm. becoming better about posting to it and that's um art by tuesday so on instagram it's art by tuesday and on Facebook, my Facebook art page is also, if you go facebook.com forward slash art by Tuesday, that's me. And it's down as Tuesday Houston Art. Lovely. And I'm adding all of those again into the chat bar for everyone's reference when they get there. You probably hear my laptop going tick, 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 tick in the background. <laughs> <clears throat> Okay, so it looks like most people are ready for the next step, I think. The next step, which is going to be, we're going to start adding more of the details. So again, from the top down, but what I'm actually going to do, although it's from the top down, so I'm going to turn this upside down, just because I'm less likely to smudge what... <laughs> what I've already got there because if I because I'm working flat if I have my arm over that but I'll probably land up with green everywhere um, and yeah now it's just to add in the the colors and the details on the hot air balloon and uh, the stripes and the roof and things on the on the little house and also do another layer of white because you can probably still see quite a bit of your sky through the the white bits. So yeah, and don't don't feel that you have to do the hot air balloons like you know, have fun with them. Make the hot air balloons whatever colour you want. Or they could have stripes or spots or zigzags or actually if you think about it, if you look at those hot air balloon races that you you see Sometimes I was good. Um, I don't know when last I actually saw one in real life, but that you see in magazine pictures and things. Mm. I mean, you get hot air balloons in all sorts of shapes and sizes. You could land up, you know, you could have a, a giant bottle floating in the sky, or a <laughs> dragon, or a teddy bear. Or... Steve, 
Stevie, I would like to have a flamingo hot air balloon in my sky. Would oh, that wow. be possible? <laughs> I'll try my best. <laughs> might look like that. No pressure, Steve, none. None whatsoever. <laughs> I love that you went with a flamingo. I've got my best friend has moved to Wales uh, oh, several years ago, but we have this thing of sending each other, not actual flamingos, but whenever we see something with a flamingo, we send each other a snapshot. And I don't know, it's just sort of grown over the years and from all over the place. And you know, you'll be at the supermarket and next thing you see, oh, and there's a biscuit packet with a flamingo on it and I'll send her a snapshot or she'll be... <laughs> you know, at the kids' awesome. school, and somebody's got a school bag with a flamingo on it, and she'll send me a snapshot. And it's actually it's a very sweet way to stay in touch, <laughs> yeah, it is. without having to say anything of any significance. <laughs> yes, exactly. Flamingos are such like bizarre-looking animals. <laughs> they're really beautiful, but they're also like, yeah, weird looking. I think Stephen would think that they're cute. He likes yeah, like yeah. long, lanky looking animals. The <laughs> obsession is the llama, the alpaca. <laughs> yeah, another another odd looking animal, but <laughs> each to their own. <laughs> I read a, a thing, I think it was on QI this week, uh, on their page, that apparently the reason why llamas get aggressive is that if they spend too much time around humans, they start thinking that humans are llamas, and then they attack them. <laughs> <laughs> so if you find a wild llama, it won't be aggressive, but if you find a llama that's been around humans for quite a while, they, <laughs> they chase you. <laughs> oh, wow. I call my girlfriend's mother a llama. Her name is An Angelama. Angie, but I just called her, you know, it just happened that she's become the Angelama. The <laughs> Angelama. So I'm just wondering if I'm going to go something different from my other hot air balloon. I think I'm going to give it spots. <laughs> other people might not be daring enough to change it up, but I'm going to. Love polka dots. Thank you. 
How are you doing, Steve? I'm doing good. This is very relaxing, I must say. It can be incredibly um, therapeutic. Yeah, you get sure. just lost in the... It's such a nice thing to do on a Sunday, you know. And it's a fun thing to do as a family, you know, if there's anyone with kids, you can all sit and... Mm. Play some music. Do your own and play some music. There's something about if you give a, you know, kids are so creative, but it's somehow special when they get to paint on a real canvas. Mm. <laughs> Makes mm. it a treat. Absolutely. Especially in the process of doing a kiddies class, like a kiddies painting set. Oh, lovely. So we're looking forward to it. So it's going to be very interesting. I always, paint and sippy. I've always loved working with kids. They just have this unique perspective. Mm -hmm. you, know, you can never quite predict what they're going to come up with or come out with. Or Again, your your I don't know, I always do my houses with red roofs. I'm just thinking if I look mm. at any of my paintings, not necessarily seaside ones, they've always had red roofs. I don't I can't tell you why. Um but of course your roof can be any colour you want it to be. How did you get into this series? I mean, because they were quite similar. Yeah, this was also, I I'd, um, I actually started painting in this style as a hobby long before I started paint, actually selling these landscapes. I was doing something very different. For a few years, I was doing um, fairly abstract nudes. <laughs> Nudes. So yeah, you know, something completely oh, different. Wow. Fairly abstract nudes, reverse painted on glass. Um, so totally different to this. And I found I started doing these little landscapes just as an escape, as a mm. as a way to paint something completely different and just get lost in a painting. And yeah, it just evolved from mm. there. So you know, as, as much as I'm obsessed with octopuses and I'm sure they're going to be around for a while mm. I can't say that I'm going to be doing them for the rest of my life because you never know when suddenly you'll <laughs> something will go off in a different direction yeah, something inspires you, yeah. and, and you but then you do still revisit things it's like now mm. I'm I'm not really selling and doing these little landscapes much every anymore but every now and again like now going back to doing one or mm. I'll get a commission where somebody wants one and I will re revisit it as a theme. Any questions from anyone? How's everyone doing? 
I'd love to hear a new voice. I don't know if there's someone else I can pick on that I <laughs> that'll respond. Mm. <laughs> Let's see. I actually took a little look at the paint and sip um, Instagram and Facebook, and I see some of you are sharing your mm. um, pieces. So thank you so much for that. And it's actually just, yeah, it's really amazing how many people are interacting with us there. Mm. Louise, how are you doing? How's your weekend been? Oh. Oh, she has. Oh, uh, you were on mute? Well, you muted yourself muted now. Muted again. <laughs> <laughs> you were off mute. Oh, that's looking Are lovely. Mm. <clears throat> looking good. It is looking great. Mm. And Michelle, I also recognize Michelle. How are you doing? Oh, there's Natasha. Hey, hi, <laughs> Natasha. Hi. Hi. I'm, I'm struggling with the, the, the bits in between. So getting a, a nice line between the hills and between the sand and the sea and the sky and the sea and does it matter it, it I don't think it looks good when it blurs in you know it, it needs to be quite clear it, but how well, do you do that it's actually it needs to be fairly clear but not totally clear you'll see let me grab my finished one and I'll show you so I mean you can see on mine it's fairly clear but not totally solid because what we're going to do is come in and I'm going to show you once we've added our little details I actually do come in and put a line so all of these things have almost like been outlined mm. and that's going to be the very last yeah. stage that we do um, and and that's going to give you what if you look really closely let me see how close we can go to the camera it, it it's not totally solid it's fairly blurry but when you stand okay. when you stand back okay. and see it it reads to your eye like yes. like a, a solid line so uh, that's okay. also another good thing is to remember so if you look closely you see it's 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 not it is a bit blurry the, the edges mm. um yeah you just got to remember whenever someone sees your painting, they're not going to come and look at it with their nose up to the painting as one tends to do when you're working on it. You know, they're going to see it from across the yes. room. And even if they come and look closely at it, they're still going to look at it from like a meter away or something. So do remember to stand yeah. back and actually see it the way you would if it was hanging on the wall. So that's mine so far. No, that's looking fantastic. So oh, yeah, it's looking lovely. Yeah, really yeah. is looking good. Yeah, no, it's very easy to become over particular and over critical when you when you're working on it and and forget to just stand mm. back mm. and see it as as you know the a normal. And it's view not going to be it. perfect. You know what I mean? It's just. Painting isn't perfect. Well, the thing is, if it, if it if you get it too perfect, it lands up looking like a computer printout. You know, it's like something mm. that's been done on Photoshop. Um, and no one will believe you. Yeah. So you do want, you know, you still want it to <laughs> want it so to look a bit painterly. <laughs> okay. Cool. I thought I thought that your uh, colors looked very strong. My, my son did a little painting as well. Ooh. Oh, I love oh, that. I think that's cute. Oh, I love well the birds done. and the trees. <laughs> that's lovely. He even has that's his own interpretation. And birds, and he's got Jupiter or Saturn. Saturn. <laughs> yeah, I can see he was listening to you. I love that. That's that's you can tell him that's my favorite one out of the lot. Sorry to the rest of you. <laughs> He's seven. Oh no, that's beautiful. That's definitely my favorite. <laughs> okay, great. I've now got I've got this bad habit and you can see here is I don't clean my brushes in between, so I land up using a hundred and four brushes per painting and I need to actually <laughs> clean a few. Uh, 
there's a few people that are going to clean their water now from their brushes to get nice clear colors. Yeah, well, that's the other thing. If you start letting it get too mucky, then you actually start, the brushes start messing up your, your clear paints. The handy thing to do as well is either have a, an old painting rag, you know, sort of like an old towel you can use, or paper towel or something, and then as you rinse your brush, you can always give it just a bit of a wipe to get the, the big lumpy bits of paint off. <coughs> if you don't want to have to go and clean the whole lot, it just does help to wipe the solid bits off. So I'm just going in and things like on my red is quite streaky. So I'm putting on a, a second coat of paint now that the, the red is dried. You'll find if you try and do a second coat while the paint is still wet, you actually just end up taking as much paint off as you are putting on. So you do need to have it get dry in between the layers. But acrylics do dry very quickly. I think that that's the thing why, why oil painters struggle with acrylics and why acrylic painters kind of struggle in oils is just that thing because of drying times. They're two very different ways of painting. With oils, you can spend days moving around wet paint and blending wet paint because it takes so long to dry. And with acrylics, especially in summer when it's hot and dry, I mean, it it's, can dry as fast as you're putting it down. Another thing I've seen a lot of painters do, oil painters, is often they'll do an underpainting in acrylic because it dries so quickly. And they'll do their basic blocks of color and shapes in, in acrylics first, and then they'll paint their oil paints over it. It's one of those things you can paint oil paints on top of acrylic, but you can't paint acrylic paints on top of oil. It's like a bit of a, a, a science lesson there. It's like oil and water. Oil can go on top. Water goes underneath. Just five Patricia, what else have you been doing in oh, gosh. lockdown? I mean, aside <laughs> from making very cool masks. And... I'm one of those people, I do keep myself busy, but I'm very good at keeping myself busy with all the things I shouldn't be doing instead of actually getting on with stuff I should be doing. I'm incredibly good at distracting myself. <laughs> so I've done lots of sewing. Mm -hmm. Lots of Things, baking. Anything specific that you're saying? Um, I made a lot of clothes out of, yeah. I didn't have fabric, but out of, actually your... things like the dress I'm wearing today was out of some leftover fabric my mum had from upholstering her outdoor furniture. Oh, wow. 
which meant that I could be camouflaged to see if I if I snuck to see her during lockdown because I could sit on her stoop on her outside furniture and nobody would notice me because I was camouflaged. <laughs> yeah, made a lot of masks, as I think everybody landed up doing. Um, well, well, not not everybody, yeah, huh? <laughs> lots of people. I lost Artis actually delivered his wife's baby. Oh wow! Himself. His name is Drake Wolf. Yeah. And I was completely blown away. I mean, that is she, okay. No, that's impressive. He was impressive. too scared to, to go to hospital. Yeah. You know, it was the height of, of the height of. And no, he learned how to deliver a baby and had a a mid nurse. Midwife. Mid, midwife. That's yeah. sorry, that I'm clearly a male here. Um, <laughs> and you know, just on standby, just in case, and delivered his own child. Oh no, I, I feel like such an underachiever. <laughs> Really Such an underachiever. I've never delivered a baby. I've given birth to a couple, but <laughs> ne never actually um, delivered <laughs> someone uh, else's. Actually, remarkable. I've not only given birth twice, I've given birth in two different hemispheres. Well, that's <laughs> quite something. <laughs> <laughs> my daughter was <laughs> born in the northern hemisphere and my son was born in the southern hemisphere. Oh. So, yeah. <laughs> And you've also joined the National Sea Rescue. I have. I'm a, a trainee controller with um, Sea Rescue. One of the, the nice things about being at, at living at the seaside is that I can now join Sea Rescue. My daughter was very involved with them. She was crew about four years ago. Um, and, yeah, I've always had a huge amount of respect and admiration for our sea rescue guys. And they were looking for new trainee controllers and I decided, we well, are, yeah, what a wonderful experience that's going to be. And it has been, it's fascinating. I'm, what, it, I'm having... what does it mean? Like, what is, what is the... once, once you're a senior controller, you pretty mm -hmm. much coordinate all the, the rescues, that, oh, wow. all the rescue Shit. operations. So, you know, you, you the contact point between the guys who are actually out there on the boats and emergency services on land and you've got to do the navigation and all the radio communications <coughs> and things. So it is very involved. So it's, I think I'm going to be a trainee for quite a while to come before I get any further, but um, mm. yeah, it's fascinating. And I'm sure. learning so, I mean, so many new things every time I go through there mm. and they're just such nice, such a nice bunch of people. A lot of camaraderie. A huge amount of camaraderie. Mm. And it is, I mean, Sea Rescue is volunteers, and it's incredible just to see people who give up so much of their personal private time mm. to go out and, and do things for the community. Yeah, but again, that's me distracting myself with other things, which means I, <laughs> not, that aren't painting. But still, you can't paint 24 hours a no, day. No, of course. Well. <laughs> well, you could. But you could. But, uh... <laughs> I would probably be doing things like Sistine Chapels if I did, but instead um, yeah, distract myself with... <laughs> Looking absolutely lovely Tuesday. Oh, um, just to get a sense of where everyone's at, and if we are ready to move on to the flowers, let me see your pieces, please. Thank you, Louise. I see that you are putting the detail into your um, hot air balloons and lighthouses. Kate, yours is looking awesome. <laughs> you just have to sit there and hold yours up, it's so big. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Good. I think I think everyone's generally okay to move on to the flowers of the yep, there's Renatas looking very nice. Nice. Also, um 
just completing the detail of her hot air balloons. Okay. Yeah, I think I think I think we are uh, set to slowly start the next step, and then everybody can take it at their own pace. I think um, when it comes to the flowers, if you've got a, a depending on how you painted your hill, if you've got one hill that's particularly wet still, um, rather don't do the flowers there. Let that one dry and, and start on whatever's driest first. It just makes your life easier. Otherwise, you'd end up mixing mixing colors on the actual canvas. Um, so I'm going to start up here with some dots. Again, I want to do yellow dots, but I'm going to mix quite a bit of white in with it just to make it a nice bright solid yellow because otherwise actually I'll show you here with one if you if you use the yellow just as it is it's not really going to show up that nicely you know it kind of you hardly you can see it a bit whereas if you do it with the the white in it put one next to it we'll see the difference there's a massive difference between how you see that one and how you see the other one. So, I find just, just little dots can be very effective. Um, another way to get a nice neat dot, if you're not sure of, of using brushes, and actually I think you might all just have the square brushes, is your end of the paintbrush. So the, the end without the bristles is you can dip that in the paint and give yourself really nice dots and it's a very precise, mm. quick way to get mm. a nice neat dot is with the wrong end of the brush. That's a very quick way to, to neatly do it. Okay. I'm now going to use the same yellow to do flowers along here. And actually, instead of painting a little flower, if you think about flower petals, I'm just going to do a little circle, rings of dots that will then look like a, a flower. You just load up the end of the stick bit again, it gives you... So five little dots actually gives a very pretty little flower. Somehow odd numbers always seem to work nicely for flower petals. The other thing that, that is obviously not in your kit, but that works quite nicely for doing dots is um, cotton buds, like those earbuds. Well, you're not oh, right. supposed to call them earbuds because you're not supposed to stick them in your ears, apparently. But <laughs> <laughs> cotton buds are actually a great thing to have in your painting kit because they work very well for doing things like dots. Mm -hmm. They're also very handy if you want to, in a controlled way, wipe something back or wipe it away. Oh, I see. It's like a little eraser. It's like a little eraser, yeah. It's mm. a little sponge. It's very handy to have. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
You can also have some that are like, if they're on the edge, that's only like half a flower. <laughs> Well, just remember if you're using the back of your paintbrush just to give it a wipe <laughs> before you land up getting holding it from that end using it the other way and get paint everywhere which is again something that I regularly do what's that saying do as I say don't do as I do <laughs> I've got other fields here, not anything that really shows much, but on some of the see, even on something like this field here, without actually doing anything, just by adding squiggly lines and a bit of shading, you can also give a field a different look. One, and I don't know if you see this much on the camera, but also just with dots there and then there's stripes, just little, little stripes. And so it's not actual plants or anything, but it's just patterns work. Oh, and I also want to just add a bit of yellow to my actual light of my lighthouse. But I'm going to leave a, a white patch for the brightest part of the light. Just give it more of a glow. Moving really slowly. That's all coming together. There's your fence. Looking lovely. The other thing is you can come back and play is, mm. is you know, two days from now, if you've got it sitting there and you see it, you might decide, oh, you want to add more flowers or you want to actually cover something up and change it. Um, you know, it's very easy to do if you decide that one of your fields you want to be different. Wait until it's dry and then go back to it and um, you can always change it and adjust it. Okay, for my big flowers, I'm actually, for this one, I'm just going with the size of the wide brush and just letting the brush do the work. Instead of painting in petals, I'm just sort of like with a loaded brush. Pushing down and you can very quickly get a, a very effective flower.
How are you doing there, Steve? Oh, it's good. I I do find myself jumping from one one bit to the mm, other. Mm. That's so that's all back. good. As you yeah. as you see things that need doing. Yeah, like doing my heel sides again. <laughs> so it's nice because the acrylic dries so nicely so quickly. Mm. It does sometimes. I love those big flowers. Oh. Tuesday. <laughs> it's Watching you paint that was so therapeutic. <laughs> it's so amazing. One can get lost in pattern making. There, there is something very therapeutic about doing a, a sort of random repeat pattern. Mm. Mm. Okay. What are some of the um, participants' patterns? Is anybody doing anything a little bit more unique? Have you decided to go with lines, dots, stars, UFOs, UFOs, <laughs> whatever? And remember, it's, Show us if you're it's doing something a little bit different. It's fields. You can have chickens or, you know, <laughs> sheep. Sheep is a nice one. So they're basically oh. like white blobs. Yeah. <laughs> Steve, I really want sheep. <laughs> oh, dear. Sorry, Steve. Oh, the pressure. <laughs> sheep on the hills with flamingos in the sky. How whimsical. <laughs> oh, I like those flowers. They're more uh, bubbly. They're more, yeah, blobby. So I'm just doing, instead of just plunking it down for a straight stripe, I'm just giving the, the brush a bit of a wiggle so that it um, makes a bit more of a blob. I just thought you just need to put a tiny pink dot in the sky and it's just a flamingo that's really see, far uh, away. Here we go. <laughs> You're getting your flamingo. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> sorted out how to do it. Success. <laughs> <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Hello, Louise. Yours is looking nice. Oh, you're going on to your flowers now, it seems. Oh, I nearly forgot to do something on my top field. See, that happens. Actually, there's an artist who shall remain nameless because it's an embarrassing story, but a very top South African artist who was represented by one of the galleries I was also represented at, and he dropped off a whole lot of his paintings. And I actually had to call him back the next day when they were going through them and said, um, I think one of these isn't supposed to be like this, or is it unfinished? And they sent him a photo, and he'd actually forgotten to do like the bottom third of the painting. <laughs> he just he'd kind of done the top lot and hadn't finished it, and it went out with a batch. <laughs> anyway, so he had to go fetch it and 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 finish it. <laughs> Would it be something that he could own? Just own it. <laughs> just say, hang on, we're this all is, this, is meant, this is complete. That's it. It's, it, it symbolizes something. Wow, that is so pretty. It's amazing what an array of different patterns this um, makes you feel. It, it makes me feel so happy. They, yeah, there is something very happy about the whole flower patterns. Mm. And they're actually so simple to do, but they really elevate it into something very cheerful. It does. And you're just putting little sprigs of colour now in I'm the middle just, of your flowers. Yeah, putting okay. little dots in the middle. And again, I've I've kept the colours very simple, just doing the yellow and the white. But I mean, you can go quite psychedelic if you wanted to. Yeah, you know, that's you're only limited by your imagination. <laughs> Did you hear that, Steve? You can go quite psychedelic. <laughs> As I think, don't encourage him. <laughs> I won't, because I'm... I can imagine. <laughs> yeah. I haven't actually got to the patterns yet, but... Um, He's making sure your painting is yeah, perfect for you. No, I feel like there's this extra pressure now that I've made this very kind offer to you. <laughs> you know it's going to be worth a fortune one day, Alex. This is going Very to be this is like your, indeed. your retirement fund. You're going to be able to sell off this painting, <laughs> auction off this painting one day. <laughs> it's true. It might be worth a fortune. Yep. I am very grateful, Steve. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to just leave the screen for a second to go and, and get myself some clean water for the, the next bit while everyone catches up. It's also important that your painting's completely dry but uh, before you do the final stage. So if for some reason your painting happens to still have thick wet bits, don't do the final black lines until it is properly dry. Because um, otherwise it's just all going to smudge and become very blotchy. Mm.
Stevie, let's see your painting. Where are you at? Oh, wow. Okay. Um, Don't spoil the surprise for your Christmas oh, presents. I love that. You know, it kind of gets to a point where we've got to stop showing you. Because mm -hmm. otherwise, you know, that's it. Christmas is ruined. So absolutely. <laughs> She's a, you're I'm just full really of wisdom. Curious, like really <laughs> I'm full curious. of something. I don't know if it's wisdom. <laughs> Was that a delicate way of saying no? <laughs> I can show you what his paint palette looks like. That's yes. really gorgeous. I mean, this this in itself is a masterpiece. Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? That's great. It actually does look like like it's got fields and the sky yeah. and like <laughs> a little bit of a road there. Okay, well, thank you for showing me the palette. <laughs> actually, there, there are artists who do that, who work on palettes and then sell them off as, <laughs> as another means of income. They, oh, wow. You know, the, when <laughs> they sell off their actual used palettes. As little abstract <laughs> works, <laughs> and their floor mats <laughs> with splattered paint and all sorts. Yeah, <laughs> I think if you're a really famous artist, you could sell anything. Mm. You know, the socks that you stood in while painting <laughs> the Mona Lisa. I think that would exactly. know anything. Really. Oh dear, I got some paint on Steve's tablecloth. I told That's you I should okay. put down. Put down those almost like not, not the, the drop cloths, but they, those things that they use for like forensics, you know, the thick rubber sheeting. <laughs> <laughs> Are those clear? Um, I'm Portuguese and I don't know if hopefully there's no other Portuguese people on this call. If <laughs> 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 you confirm my mom was an avid cover everything in plastic <laughs> and it was uh, purely because you know children weren't allowed to play in the common areas so we'd always have like a second lounge where it was for visitors only and it was always had the nice items with no plastic and then everything else was covered in plastic to try and child proof everything oh while well, i'm doing this here's a little handy hint for you which works especially well nowadays that everybody's got hand sanitizer is when you're trying if you get acrylic paint on your clothes and things you know once it's dry you're usually pretty much stuck with that but painted but if you use alcohol rubbing alcohol which is pretty much like what hand sanitizer is it loosens up the acrylic paint and you mm. can actually get it out again so Amazing. While I'm waiting, I'm just doing some little stain removal on your tablecloth. Oh. Oh, wow. That's, yeah. That's a very handy tip. Thanks. Handy tip. <laughs> Do you have any tips for cleaning paintbrushes? Oh, gosh, there's so many. I mean, if you Google it, there's so many. I'm quite hard on paintbrushes, I must say. Um, I'm, you must. The biggest thing is you must never leave them out to get dry. Once the paint is dry on the brush, by the time you've tried to loosen it all up and clean it and spent mm. money on solvents and things, you're actually better off just chucking the brush and getting yourself a new one. So you're not supposed to leave paint brushes in water overnight, but I must say that is something I generally do. If I've got a dirty brush, it goes into a, a thing, of, not with oil paints, of course, but with acrylics, <laughs> it goes into a, a jar of water until I clean them. And then what I found, a lot of people use soap, but if you use liquid soap, you go through huge amounts of it. Um, 
So you could either use your sunlight dishwashing soap, and I'll put a little bit of soap in my hand, and then I actually rub the paintbrush mm -hmm. quite hard like this into the soap so that the soap goes right through the bristles, and then you clean it under the tap and rinse out all the soap. But what I found works better than the liquid soap is if you get the good old-fashioned bar of... You can actually even just use a, a, a bar of normal bathroom soap, you know, mm. your palm olive or your life boy or your mm. whatever. <laughs> um, but a, an old-fashioned green bar of sunlight soap and, soap and you just rub the bristles hard into the soap bar mm -hmm. and then rinse them until the water's clear and that's the best way. Mm -hmm. To get them clean and then while they're still wet just with your fingers kind of realign the bristles so that they're not all frazzled realign the bristles and never right. store your brushes sort of bristle down you then Always up. either lay them flat somewhere or put them upright in a in a jar like that so that they right. the Thank bristles you. stay upright yep But it's also why I know you can you can buy good brushes for fairly you know nice brushes to use are still still fairly inexpensive and then you get brushes that are worth I mean you can easily go to one of the art shops and spend five hundred rand on a brush um, but I just yeah no I I could never justify doing that because I'm just too hard on brushes and mm. you get really nice sort of not too expensive at all uh student the prime art ones are nice or some of the dollar ones are, are mm, these great are the, these the ones, ones are lovely are... yes these these ones are actually fantastic mm, and they clean really nicely great. and yeah you know, straighten up the bristles afterwards and they do last a good long time i mean i've never mm. had these this type of brush actually the brush has never malfunctioned the only thing that's gone wrong with it is i've either Le <laughs> left it to get dry or you know it's it's human error it's never actually been brush error <laughs> <laughs> but over time you can see like with these ones that i've used even though they're clean the the bristles have actually become quite stained mm. you know they they they're like pale beige when you get them and, and some colors mm. actually stain them so although it's clean it does have that so it's not a problem, stain. right? No, it's it's That's fine. Just, so long yeah. as it's it's stained it's as blues. opposed to yeah, you, know, you can see I work I work I work with a lot of blue. Um and there's one of the blues that seems to actually have so it's it's not almost like normal paint pigment would wash washes off, it does seem to have a, a dye in it that stains. <laughs> How are all the patterns going? Oh, lovely. Nice, nice big flowers. How is everyone um, for us to move on to the next step of refining the um, boundaries of the field? Give us a thumbs up if you think that you're ready to sort of embark on that part. I, I can imagine that the patterning might take quite a while and you could get really stuck in the detail. With this, uh, as I said, this patterning needs to be done once it's totally dry. So I think it's actually one of those things that I need to show, but that um, maybe people yeah. won't be actually ready to do it in the session depending on how wet their paint is because um, it is a... a the very final step that needs to be. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. That's a great yeah. idea. I'm just looking. I seem to have brown here. You've got the black. I mean, could be either. Mm. And you need very actually need incredibly little paint for this step. Um, 
because you're going to make it very diluted. And I do it with two brushes. So I have the brush that I'm painting with, and then I have a second brush that is damp, but where did I put my water? That's damp but clean. So it's a good idea to have either some paper towel with you or a wad of toilet paper or some tissues or an old rag. Anything that, that you can just wet, wet your second brush and then wipe off the extra water. And what I'm going to do is I'm, I make a very dilute paint. So I have my black with lots of extra water in. Super thin it down. It still looks black, but it's just very runny. And you carefully paint in your lines, but you'll see the lines quite thick as I paint it in. And then I use the clean brush to like make the line thinner, to push the paint towards the, the center of it and come in from the other side <coughs> and kind of it blends the line it also makes it slightly fuzzy so it's not it's not like a pen line it's it is like a shaded paint line as opposed to going in with a you know if you went in with a permanent marker or something you could also get a a black line around the edges, but it would be a very solid line. This is, this is, although it's a line, it's a shaded line. And you're just going to do that from, you know, work, you, things like the hot air balloon where your lines cross over each other, sort of do the vertical lines and then let them dry before you do the horizontal lines because where that crossover point is, you'll, you'll obviously wipe away the, the other stripe if you try and go over it. So put that and then in with a clean brush and I clean off my brush. And you can see I also move my canvas constantly as I'm working just so that I find an angle that I'm comfortable at. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
And you can you can manipulate this line as much as you want while it's still wet. As soon as it's dry, it'll kind of be set in place. But while it's also part of the reason why you so water it down, while it's still wet, you can actually almost like push the line around the page with the clean brush. Oh, okay, there we go. Okay, Alex? I mean, it's still very Do you much want working. to see your work in progress? <laughs> yes, yes, he, yes, he, yes. You had to wait until he had the flamingo. So there there's go. your flamingo oh, over so there. Cute. So <laughs> there you go. I bet yours is the only one with a flamingo. My friend Evelyn is going to be very jealous that you get a flamingo and she doesn't. <laughs> I'll have to send her a picture. <laughs> That's very nice, Stevie. You're Good so job. Welcome. So Louise is asking, how is this looking? Um, and she's showing her painting. Oh, that's so looking know. lovely. It is looking that lovely. Is looking that is looking very lovely. Thank you. I mean, you'll see a lot of like naive paintings in this kind of style, they don't do the line. So you don't ha have to finish it off. I just find with mine, I do like, it is makes it slightly more cartoony having the, the solid lines as opposed to, you know, it's more like an illustrator style as opposed to a fine art style when you outline things. But I like the quite graphic quality of it then. I think also some of my favorite artists are actually illustrators. So 
So um, what I think Tuesday, just mm. because I'm cognizant of time, um, is that it's, and it's going on to about 10 to 5 now, um, that at around 5 o'clock, we slowly start um, wrapping up and then I can do the Wheel of Names and yep. and such. I know that there's quite a fair amount of details still, but um, yeah, in the next 10 minutes, if we have any final steps, then I can wind everything down and everyone can go on to a very relaxing afternoon um, finishing off their detail. So I think also it's, and now if we've got this time difference, uh, time limits coming up, Everyone must just think also if they've got any other questions, either about this or for a step of something they might want to do later once we're off air, they um, yeah, just ask the questions now, make the most of the time. That's a fantastic suggestion. Um, does anybody have any other questions that they'd like to ask in the meantime? Do we have a Ronald Burger on the call? Funny I'm actually going to come take a look. Ronald Burger. Um, we don't. It doesn't seem like it, no. Well, Ronald, when you do watch this, happy birthday for Monday. <laughs> <laughs> Why am I not soon? Hey, I go. Can I just say that I really love this one. I was reluctant. I kind of thought, oh, this is a weird painting, but <laughs> it's actually really lovely. I, I had a great time. This is my result so far. Oh, and that's as you can so see, cheerful. cheerful. <laughs> oh, that's wow. really cheerful. Beautiful. And thank you, thank you, thank you. I really had a great time again. I'm pleased you enjoyed it. I must say, I've, I've started thinking, you know, we've got this idea of what good art is and and it's often i mean it, it there's great art but art needn't be serious you know life is so serious especially at the moment life can be so serious and really drag one down that sometimes it's nice just to have fun um you know you need to yeah. to enjoy it and be light-hearted and not I take it too art. seriously I want to show you my friends. Come on, show oh, me. Oh, yes. Can you see Hi. Hi. Oh, also great. Hi. <laughs> There's Lorraine. Hi, oh, Hi Lorraine. Hi. Super. Hi. I'm coming on. <laughs> no, it's looking great. Both of yours are looking Thank great. You. <laughs> Thank you again for joining us, Renata. Wonderful. Um, anytime. You. I, you know I love this. <laughs> Can't wait for next month. Me neither. <laughs> Um, Louise has a last question. Mm. How did you do the final lines, the black paint thinning? Okay, that's part. what I, I'm, I'm busy doing now, which is with the, I'll repeat the, the process. So I've got the, the black, and I actually use quite a bit of water with the black and, and mix it in. So it's not much paint. I mean, this is a tiny dollop of paint, which is now spread over my palette because I have added quite a bit of water and I've got the two brushes I've got the brush that's got the paint on it and I've got a clean damp brush so I'm going to start off I'm going to do this bottom edge of the roof there where the gutter would be so I paint in a black line to begin with and then I use my damp brush to almost neaten up the line and smudge the edges and <coughs> make the line a bit narrower. So I come in from both sides of the line and just smudge that line together with a damp brush, cleaning it off on Why a, can on I a not see the upper view anymore? Uh oh, oh that I don't know. Oh, I got it. I you got, got it. it. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> I was going to say that's that's technical questions or don't work for me, but no, I'm pleased you found it. Okay, so I'm going to do this edge of the roof now. So it's the very watery black that I paint along, and you, you, uh, I'm just wondering if I hold it up, you can see it can be 
it's quite a bit oh, thicker than the other lines to begin with. And then with that's just, this is just water I've got here with a damp brush. I just must like paint the edges in with a clean brush. I sort of push them together so it becomes a narrower line and it has a slightly fuzzy edge to it. Let's see. I don't know how well the camera picks that up. But that's the, the process. And it's just practice. And the thing about having the paint very wet is it does also just give you a little bit of time to don't go and do hundreds of long lines and then try and eating them up because it'll be dry by then. Just work on one line at a time and kind of paint in the line and then neaten it up with a with a clean damp brush. Not wet, a damp brush. If it's wet, it'll start bleeding everywhere. So that's why you need a tissue or something just to dry off your clean brush. Um, I have a final question, mm -hmm. Tuesday. You always have the most amazing way that you sign your name. Oh. <laughs> Um, is it like indented or something? How do you do that? That, which I haven't actually done on this, is, yes, you can either use, so what I would do with, with those pieces that's an embossed thing is you um, get a, a a liner pen, but it's actually, it's it's almost like paint in a syringe tube, type, not a syringe tube, like a squeezy tube, but it's uh, mm -hmm. liner bottles. You'll see if you, you, sometimes I haven't got one with me, you get fabric paint sometimes in the bottles so that you can squeeze out a line. So what I'll do is on the blank canvas before I start is I actually write in my name and then it just leaves that that embossed layer. Uh, and then you, okay. you paint it's over like that. Yeah. Layer but it's like a, a, a liquid liner, you know, a liquid liner. I think I Dala see. actually do, do them as well. It's a standard thing that anyone who who sells those supplies should have. Okay. No, it's so nice. Have you got any of the pieces behind you that has your Oh, yes. Design? I'm just thinking some of them would, would do. I'm just wondering which would show up on the camera the best. Probably this one on the end. That one is, I, that's just the most unique way. So, of, um, yeah, there you can see there's I, my, that's so cool. my name across the bottom. And, yeah, it is, it's like three-dimensional. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Have we got any other final questions, Maureen? I see that you put your, your camera on. Do you have a, a question? <laughs> oh, you need to take your, your um, mic off mute, which you can do sometimes if you just hold down your space bar. That sometimes helps. If it's not working, then you just have to go to where your microphone is and just click on it. No, unfortunately, still, still muted. And I see that you have a friend there that might be able to help you. Right down at the bottom of your screen on the left, you should see the microphone um, and you'll see the camera. If you just click on that microphone button, that should unmute you. you you can also, um, if you'd like to, put the question in the chat bar. Oh, that's easy. Yeah. Oh, let me see if I can, uh, maybe I can try and unmute you. Wait. Um, okay. 
Okay. All right. Are there any other final um, questions at this stage as we approach five o'clock? Um, I'm going to start winding the session down, do our draws, and um, and announce the next paint and sip piece. So um, in the next minute or two, let us know if you have any final questions. I also would like to take this opportunity so that we can lift up our paintings and take a group photograph from wherever we are calling in from. <coughs> So just the final moments just to um, have your final questions if you have. Okay, looks like... It looks like we are all um, we're all happy Tuesday. Okay. So um, I just want to take this opportunity to say a huge thank you to you for the absolutely incredible lesson this afternoon. Um, your very patient step by step instruction. It was so relaxing, so therapeutic, um, and created so much joy on this Sunday. So thank you, thank you, thank you so much for being with us again. Um, let's put our mics on and say a huge thank you and round of applause for Tuesday. You are like one of our absolute favorites. <laughs> thank, you. thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks so much. Oh, it's been great. I tell you, call to care have been so fantastic. I, I look forward to looking uh, to working with them every year. It's, um, we did skip one year, and I, I, I missed them horribly. So hopefully, I'll see you all again next year sometime. Okay, yeah, sooner. Or sooner. Yeah. <laughs> very, very soon, definitely. Okay, so I think um, let's all hold up our pieces wherever we're at right now um and tuesday i think we can stop sharing or maybe stevie can help on the technical front there to just stop sharing the top cam um and that way i'll have a little bit more control to take a screenshot of everybody um and at this stage for those so don't have their cameras on if you can put your cameras on that would be appreciated but naturally of course you don't have to if you don't want to <laughs> if you're in your pajamas and very comfortable then you don't have to at all <laughs> um, but this will be shared on our platforms and it's got it so amazing to, to have yeah, all of us all of you with us today <laughs> oh it's finished <laughs> okay, okay. 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 Screens, you should be able it's to see your okay. You've got to come in this way. It's okay if it's not finished. You'll have some time <laughs> after the <laughs> session to carry on, and you can follow your step-by-step um, -step kits. And I've also added Tuesday's um, Instagram handles and Facebook handles. So there's also a, a way for you to communicate with her directly if you'd like to on her on her um, social media platform. So. There is that option, and naturally ours too. Okay, so it looks like everyone has their paintings up. Well done, well done to all of you. Um, your paintings look absolutely beautiful, and I know some of them aren't finished, but you can take time um, after the session with your music and your wine to finish them. Yay! Woo You're welcome to put your mics on. I love hearing your voices. <laughs> Thanks so much. Um, sorry, it's Lauren. Hey. Oh no, it's Alex. But yeah, so huge oh, thank you, Lauren. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's sorry, Alex. These days. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> no, they don't apologize. It's so fine. Um, okay, no, it so was long. It was. It really, really was. <laughs> So just a reminder to please take photographs of your pieces and you can share them on the page and supplies. That way you'll stand a chance to win a box for next month. I would like to say a very special thank you to each and every one of you on this call. Thank you so much for your support. Please follow our channels, follow our progress. There's a lot happening at the moment. Um, I will 
send you a lot of the Igadi project um, socials. If you can follow, please, please follow those um, those projects because now in spring, it, our gardens are harvesting so much food. And give yourselves a round of applause again. Thank you so much for being with us. I had a really lovely afternoon um, following you Tuesday. Thank you again. It was lovely painting with you all and, and have fun, be safe, and yeah, hopefully see you guys soon.